which you guys today we're taking a look at how to set up a home media server by using Jellyfin. Now Jellyfin has been around a long time. You can use other ones like Plex and other software like that, but we're going to be using Jellyfin today and we're going to be installing this onto our Synology NAS. You can use it on whatever you like, but we're going to be setting this up on our Synology NAS here. So what is Jellyfin? Well, Jellyfin is going to allow you to share all of your media, whether it be movies, whether it be books, whether it be photos, music, all on your local network to all your devices around your home or even outside your home. You can view this anywhere in the world and this can be your home media server for your home or for your friends and family. So let's go ahead and get this set up on our Synology NAS. We're at the desktop here, as you can see. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to do this. Now, by default, you can't install Jellyfin from the uh, package center here because uh, Synology don't have it in their list here. So if you do want to use something that's from Synology, you can still install Plex, which is free to install here. And you can do this if you want to, but we're gonna be going with Jellyfin here. Now, Jellyfin is also free to download and install on your system. But unfortunately, there is a way around getting it to work with uh, your Synology NAS, but you're going to have to jump through a few hoops. And the SinoCommunity.com website is where you can do this. It's a very simple way of doing things, but you just have to remember this is using third party uh, software to install onto your Synology NAS, which will not be covered by Synology. So if you're not into that sort of thing and you don't want to do it, then stick with the Plex which you would get with your Synology NAS. But if you want to use Jellyfin, uh, this is the way you can go about doing it. There is some instructions here, and this is probably the most easiest or simplest way of getting Jellyfin onto your Synology NAS. Now, if you're using Docker already, you're already into the third-party applications to install on Synology, so installing something like this is not going to be much of a problem. So let's go ahead and copy this link right here which is right on their website. And uh, once you've got this, you can head back over to your Synology NAS. And what we're gonna do is go to the package center here. Inside the package center, you need to go up to the top right hand side where it says settings, and we're gonna add it inside here. So click on settings, and now we need to go to package sources. Inside package sources, click on add, and we can add in this link. Now we need to give it a name. So let's go ahead and give this a name. I'm just going to quickly copy and paste this name in here because this is the name I want to use to recognize what we're using here. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And we can also now paste in that link that we just copied into the location. What this is going to do is that this is going to add a bunch of new applications that we can use with our Synology NAS. And again, once we've done this, you can see here now we have the name and the location added here. Click OK, and you should now see on the left-hand side, there is an area called community. So these are community-based applications. Again, you need to trust the person that's creating these applications. If you don't want to get into this sort of stuff, then don't use them. You can use uh, the packages that come with your Synology NAS. But as you can see, they have a ton of decent apps inside here which you can't get on your Synology NAS, which these uh, community members have created for you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install uh, Jellyfin via this method. So let's go ahead and install Jellyfin. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that, there it is. So click on install, and now we can install. Now this has been created by Steven, so let's go ahead and click on it. And you can see it's gonna install FFmpeg inside here, and it needs to use this for encoding and things like that. So we're gonna go ahead and click yes here, and this will download it and install it onto our NAS. So we're just gonna let that go through. And now that's done, it's gonna to say to you, this package is provided by third party developers and not verified by Synology. By clicking the agree, you acknowledge that you are solely responsible for any damages to your device or loss of data that may result from using this package. So we're gonna say okay and accept that and go ahead and install it. Now this is a pretty standard uh, you know, acknowledgement that you understand that you are installing third party packages and this basically just how it works. So if you don't wanna go down this route, 
you can always go down the Plex route, which is obviously compatible with uh, Synology and comes in the package center. So I'm going to accept this one here, and this is to install Jellyfin. And again, you have to agree to their terms. This is to install Jellyfin as you would uh, accept their terms and conditions when you install in any sort of software. This is just telling us that we need to change some permissions so the application can work correctly and get all the metadata and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and run this after the installation and click done. And this should now be installed and ready to go. We need to change those permissions. Let me quickly show you how you can go about doing that. So we now have Jellyfin installed and we also have the other software which they require, the FFmpeg on there as well. So what we're going to do here is we're not going to open this up just yet. We're just going to go and close this off. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the control panel here because we need to change those permissions. So let's click on control panel and go to shared folder. Inside the shared folder area, this is where your uh, media is going to be. So wherever your media is located, which will be in this location and whatever it's called, you need to change the permissions for that there. So it will be where all your all your movies and photos and music is inside there. Mine is in the Plex Media on this uh, system. So I'm going to go to ahead and click on Plex Media. And what we need to do here is we need to click on Edit. And we need to now go to the Permissions tab here. So let's go up to the Permissions and change the permissions for uh, our Jellyfin to work correctly. So we're going to go up to Permissions. And on the left-hand side, you can see Local Users here listed here but we still need to change the uh, system internal user information so the actual program can work correctly so down here you should now see jellyfin and ffmpeg here now right now it has no access so it can't read and write to that directory that we've just uh, selected there so what we need to do is we need to give this some access now if you only give it read access it's only going to be able to read that data inside there you're not going to be able to get any metadata for the content that's inside there the only way that's going to happen is if you give it read and write access so you're giving read and write access to that location so let me go ahead and give this read and write access and we'll click save here and we can then move on to the next step of setting up jellyfin so now that's all done you can see we can close this off and your folder may be called something different but just look in the folder where all your data is now we can go to the package center here and we can now click on uh, the Jellyfin and open up Jellyfin here. So you can see here, I'm just going to quickly update these two here because I like to keep these updated. So I'm just going to quickly update this and then we'll open up Jellyfin. OK, so that's now done. What we can do here is open Jellyfin and you should be greeted with something looking like this. This is your preferred display language. You can change it to whatever language you want. I'm English, so I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now you can give yourself a username. So set up your username here. You can call it whatever you like. Don't use the same username as your sign in for your NAS. This needs to be something totally different for Jellyfin. So give it a name of whatever you like. I'm going to call it something like Admin Jelly or whatever, something like that. So I know exactly what this is. So once you've got that set and you're happy with your username, you can move on and give yourself a password. Make sure you use a nice strong password and don't use the same password or any other stuff on your NAS because you want to keep that nice and secure. Try and use a long password as well, not as short as what I've got here, but this is just for the tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and now add some media to our library. So let's go ahead and click on the plus here. And now we can give it some uh, content type. You can choose whatever you like here, whatever you're trying to display across your network. Let's just select movies here. And from here, we can now go down to the library settings. I'll do the folder in a second. So let's do some library settings here. This is for the preferred uh, downloaded language here. We're going to put English in here. But if you're from another country, you just select the language of your choice. And the country, again, this sort of self-explanatory, really. You just put in the country where you live. I'm going to go ahead and put United Kingdom here. And you can see here, prefer embedded titles over file names so you can do that if you want to so i'm just going to quickly put that check mark in there if you don't want to check mark these just check mark the stuff you want to check mark okay so next up we've got enable real-time monitoring i'm going to leave that on and automatically add to the collection i'm going to do that also here 
going to leave this area here for the metadata and we're also going to move down uh, to never or automatically refresh metadata from the internet and we can set this up to metadata uh, savers and you can put the info uh, files inside there and again save uh, artwork to your media folders if you want to that makes it nice and easy and if you want to add chapter images you can do right here just put the check marks in there once you've done that we need to give it a location where all our media is i could have done that earlier on probably should have done but hey click on the folders plus and now give it a location of where your data is stored like your uh, all your photos and stuff so let's go ahead and click on this one here because that's where it was located and I'm going to click on this one because that's where all the files were. And you can set this up for individual uh, stuff. So if it's photos, music, and so on. So once you've got all that done, you can now click OK. And this will set it all up for us. So click OK here. And now you should now see that location we've just set up is right here. So what we can do now is we need to log into our Jellyfin because we've just created it. So let's click Next. And I'm going to change this location here to. United Kingdom. So click next again, and this will then give you uh, allow remote connection to your server. This is if you're connecting from the outside world. Uh, if you want to watch stuff from outside of your network, you can set that up if you wish. I'm going to say no here and do that later on. Click finish, and now we can sign into Jellyfin. So let's go ahead and sign in with our details that we just created here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up this right here and give me my username and also we're going to sign in with our password and there you go there's the content that i have on that nas drive you can see there is some stuff here that i can click on and i can now play this and i can also share this uh, with friends and family uh, also outside the network if i wanted to set that up i can do but you can also play this across any device on your local network and there you go very simple and easy to set up now, if you don't want it on the system anymore and you want to uh, put that back to default settings, I'll show you how to quickly do that just in case you want to get rid of it. What you need to do here is go into the package center here and look for Jellyfin. And what you need to do, you can see it's running and we're going to click uninstall. You can uninstall only by keeping files and stuff like that. I'm just going to erase everything. This makes it non-recoverable because I don't want any of that stuff on there. So I'm going to quickly uninstall Jellyfin. And we can also uninstall the FFmpeg and we're going to uninstall and erase all that stuff as well. And you would just go ahead and get rid of all that stuff. That's all done. All we need to do now is remove this community section here. And you can do that pretty straightforward and easy to do. If you would want to get rid of it, go to settings, go back to package sources and you can see it listed right here. Click on delete and click OK. And that's now been removed. If you want to remove the permissions for that stuff, if you want to, you can go back into your control panel, go back into shared folder, go back into your folder that you had your data in and go to permissions and go back into where it says system internal user. And you can remove the check marks from these two areas here and put them to no access. Pretty straightforward stuff. And that is now all set up and you're back to how you was. If you want to delete that folder with all the content in it, you can do, and that would then remove those permissions anyway. But you can see they're all set in stone and everything's done lovely, and you're back to the way you was. So no harm done. That's how you can do it. That's how you can set up your own media server on your Synology NAS, or you can uh, remove it using that method as well. And this gives you access to a bunch of other good stuff. So I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members, whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a lovely day and I shall catch you in the next one. Bye for now.